in Simisal Archives sat down with pastor, dentist and author Jackie Green to talk about how we can step into the fullness of everything God has created us to be and do. Jackie is pioneering a whole new movement with her book, Permission to Live Free, Living the Life God Created You For. Here's their conversation. Dr. Jackie Green is an author, dentist, podcast host, wife, and mother of three. She is also the co-pastor of Forward City Church, along with her husband, Grammy-nominated artist, Travis Green. In her book, Permission to Live Free, Dr. Green challenges women to break free from the world's restraints and embrace their God-given destiny. It is a pleasure to have you on TPI. I am so grateful to be here. We are so glad because we've had Travis on the show. So yes. now we that have... That means you had some fun. <laughs> we had fun, but now we're going to have more fun. Yes. Because <laughs> you are the better half. I love it. Just got to say. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So I've got to say, you've written this awesome book, Permission to Live Free, Living the Life God Created You mm-hmm. For. Mm-hmm. And I got to say this, because when I read this book, I was... So surprised because mm. I've seen you preaching online, preaching fire. I mean, you've got <laughs> your bold, strong. And so when I read that you said you were scared. Oh, yeah. In like 2016, when mm-hmm. you started Forward City Church and Travis asked you just to do a greeting. I see. And you were shaking. You were scared. You went to cry. I'm like, there is no way. <laughs> so I, I got to like, take to prove it. You did, I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I said, okay. I'm like, what was it? What gave you permission, actually, mm-hmm. you know, speak, speaking of that, to go from timid, scared, to bold? Like, what was it? I really feel this. I believe that many times we're fought in the area of our place of power where we're supposed to make our mark on the earth. And I do believe that I have been given a gift to empower women to step out of the shell and to almost unleash a freedom to be just who you were created to be from the beginning. And the thing that I was called to do, of course, it would be hard fought because the truth is you don't have a real message without having to live through the thing that you're going to proclaim. I believe it would have been somewhat counterfeit of God to say, go tell people that are afraid to go live in freedom if I had never felt fear. Mm -hmm. And for me, because fear was so paralyzing, the book Permission to Live Free is my heart's message. It was me saying that, okay, I feel this fear, but I'm not going to allow something that I feel to dominate the thing that I know that God has given me to say. I did it for too long in the paralysis that... um, ensued because of, well, I'm just going to sit still. And Travis knows how to manage moments and he knows how to manage when the Holy Spirit comes in the room. But what if I mess everything up? Mm. I wanted to slow down to let a woman that may be watching this today or even reading my book understand that you may start in a place, but if you will slow down and be honest to say, I'm actually dealing with fear and not making everybody else's fault. It's not just because I'm unsupported or it's not because you know, all these things happen in my past, but I'm just scared. Mm. God can actually heal what you don't hide. I believe you don't own it by way of permission until you actually allow it to show up in the earth. And the only way you can do that is by first getting in the face of the Lord to find out what he said about you. I think many people are not wanting to stay back or hesitate. They just don't know who they've been created to be. And I'm saying you don't know who you are until you find out who made you. You don't know who you are until you allow him to speak to you. And so it was me getting in the face of the Lord practically where I spent time, stop waiting on social media or, you know, these likes or a number of followers to validate a thing that he can say in your actual private time of prayer. He sings a song of the Lord over you. Nothing has empowered me more to step out other than the voice of God reminding me that I was his daughter. And as a daughter, I don't have to perform. Clowns perform. Daughters actually just exist in their relationship with the father. Mm-hmm. I love it. There's so much in your book I love. Oh, man. Uh, but this part, I have to talk about hair. Oh, because come on. This is Paul. <laughs> yes, Paul's what it calls. <laughs> yes. Especially for women of color. Yes. It's a big thing. It's a big it's deal. It's a big thing. And I, this literally happened to me. So I'm reading your book mm. and you have prayer, um, prayer prompts. Prompt. And I did, minding my own business, I pray. The next morning I'm praying, I start crying mm. when I was thinking about my own hair because I, you know, suffer with dermatitis. Okay. A scalp condition. Mm-hmm. So. You talked about, you know, just being insecure about it. Mm -hmm. And I just really laid it before the Lord as I was reading this book. Mm -hmm. So I want you to speak to to the many women, I'm sure, who feel insecure Mm -hmm. about their hair. What happened to you and how did you find freedom? It's a real moment of um, celebration. 
I can't, I mean, from the time I knew myself, I was two when my mom put two chemicals in my hair. She put a texturizer and a, a relaxer because I had, I'm of, of Ghanaian heritage and so my curls were very tight and she didn't know how to tame them. And um, just by trying to be a good mom and try to make me look presentable, she ended up causing my hair to all fall out. And I went on a journey of, from the moment I actually knew Jackie as a person, seeing not only was, did I have bald spots and you know things weren't quite right with my hair, well, it morphed into not just that my hair wasn't enough, but that I wasn't enough. Wow. Um, but it was a long fought journey to finally get in the mirror and say, God, you told me that it wasn't about the outside, but it was about what you placed on the inside. And even though I've lived through these complications that even though my hair grew back, it's even in health on the outside, I didn't feel health because it had damaged more than something on the outside. It had damaged the inner parts of who I was. And so it was the song of the Lord, me continuing to be honest, going back to the Lord. I can say even up until, I would even say days like today, mm -hmm. I can still at moments, even with my hair cut off and having lived through my hair being cut off and like, you know, proclaiming my freedom, I'm not gonna let this thing hold me down. There's still days that I look in the mirror and say, God, it's still too fine. Like, is it enough? There's still days that he has to remind me, baby, it's not from without that you are valuable or you are everything that you need to be. It's from within. It's from what I said about you. And if you will let your light shine, even through the thing that may be vulnerable or may be um, fine or maybe um, not as thick or luscious as someone else's, if you will allow me to shine my light on it, I'll make what you would call not enough enough and I'll let it be ministry for someone else. Because I can't even tell you the number of women in my church that began to take the weave out and cut their hair off because I was free enough to do it for them first. Now, my final question, um, you know, you talk about how you began as a secure girl when mm. you were young yeah. and then you were four and your father went to Ghana and you felt like, okay, if he can go, am I good enough? Yeah. So at this stage now, Dr. Jackie today, okay. what would you say? Ooh. Um, I would say that when God tells us in Romans 8 and 28 that he'll work all things together for our good, he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. When I look back on my life, and even with the absence of an earthly father, the God that said that he would be a father to the fatherless, I'm not saying that because I heard about it. I saw a man walk into my life and help me understand that even though I didn't have an earthly father to remind me that I was beautiful or that I was enough, I found that in the presence of the father, and he helped me to begin to step back into who I had known as a four-year-old, the girl that would say, I know that there's a God that healed my headache and helped me make a hundred on my test. Even in kindergarten, I remember my teacher, Patricia Daly, she was so amazed at how confident I was even as a kindergartner because of my awareness of the Father. And I'm saying to any woman out there, no matter what you lack in the natural, there is a God that will meet you in the supernatural and it can be enough. And as a result of him filling those voids, you will step into a fullness of yourself that I call permission, where you can be precisely and fully who God made you to be. And it will bless the earth. It'll bless every room you walk in, not even just pulpits, even in your household, even in your friendships, even in your marriages, you will show up to be an authentic version of who you were created to be. And you were saying, God, I agree with what you made and it's enough. If you'd like the story and want to see more content like this, you can make that happen by sharing this video, follow or like us on our social media platforms, subscribe to TPI for monthly updates, become a financial partner. Head over to our website for more details.